Hey guys, thanks for joining us. Today we're going to do a comparison of two Creality resin machines. This is the LD002R and the LD002H. So the LD002R, we'll start with him first. It has a build size of 119 by 65 by 160 millimeters tall and is identified by the orange cover that we have on it, as opposed to the red here. Um, we have a linear rail up the back for a nice smooth uh, Z tracking. And we're not using the perforated plate anymore. It's using this angled, you know, uh, it's anodized on one side and bare metal on the other, uh, machine steel plate slides on with this little knob. The screen that they're using is not a monochrome screen. Um, so this is the screen that you would see in many other printers that we've used on the channel. Um, uh, up until now, uh, monochrome screens have been reserved for um, typically larger and very expensive <laughs> printers. Um, so you'll have the typical lifespan of, of an average screen on this machine. Um, it also has slightly less um, resolution in the X and Y direction uh, and when compared to the 002H, but we'll come to those specs in a minute. It does have uh, activated carbon um, to try to cut down on the fumes, though I would still recommend using resin printers in a very well ventilated space. Some people go to the extreme of, of drafting the air uh, out a window or something. Unlike previous Creality printers, these are both compatible with Chitubox sliced um, files. Um, so that's nice to see. I would consider Chitubox kind of the standard as far as free slicers go for resin, and it's very capable. It's always nice to not have to learn a new slicing program just because you happen to buy a particular brand or model of printer. We have a touch screen on the front, the USB goes in the side, um, and your on and off button is right there. Uh, they're using a LED array for uniform lighting of the screen, though I know that's something they've also improved over here. On the 002H, it is a little bit bigger. So on this one, we have a build size of 130 by 82 by 160 millimeters. So it's the same height, uh, but it's larger in the X and Y direction. We have exactly the same build plate on there, angled top, anodized on only the top. And the screen here is a monochrome screen. Um, so I talked about how that one's using, you know, your typical screen we've had for a long time. So what does a monochrome screen get me? Well, a monochrome screen, instead of using a standard uh, RGB screen, uh, absorbs much less of the UV light that we're trying to have pass through it, um, or using the screen as a mask to allow certain amounts of light to pass through it. Um, in allowing more light to pass through it, it accomplishes two things. Number one, the screen itself doesn't absorb as much of that energy, so that makes the screen last longer. The other thing is, it al allowing more light through uh, speeds up the curing times of your layers. So when on a printer like this, you might use six or eight second uh, layers, depending on the resin you're using, of course, that could vary significantly. That same resin might use one or three seconds over here. Um, and like three second layers uh, significantly speeds up your print time, as you can imagine. Um, so that's really nice, especially when you have, say, a higher Z build volume. Um, having that la per layer cure time reduced uh, makes prints that would have been 40 or 70 hours, like we were doing on the PO Poly Phenom, uh, might take six or eight hours. Um, so that's, that's a really uh, huge improvement, especially if you're trying to do any kind of volume or small run production. Um, time is money, as they say. So the monochrome screen that they're using on this is a, 20, or is a 2K screen. It has a resolution of 1620 by 2560 pixels. Uh, and that gives us an X and Y resolution of uh, 51 microns or so. Um, now on here, the pixels are slightly larger. It's less pixel dense. Uh, even though it's a smaller screen, it's still less pixel dense than this one. And so the X and Y resolution over here was 75 microns. Um, so we're getting finer detail in the X and Y, and obviously they both have the same Z detail capability. Um, so not only do we get a faster print, we get higher X and Y resolution, uh, and we get 
almost four times the uh, screen lifespan out of this guy. So the screen on the front here is a three and a half inch uh, color touch screen. Um, so make sure you don't have any resin on your hands or anything like that on your gloves, that is, um, or you'll get it all over your screen. And as is kind of typical on most of these styles of printers, you have two like little release knobs. Um, this one you have to unscrew all the way. I know that some are just kind of retaining knobs. There we go. Uh, some you just like loosen and slide the, the tray out. Um, but this one, you unscrew them all the way. And uh, a nice little feature they've added is these little fill level indicators. So you can get a sense of how much uh, resin you've put in. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how many milliliters, you know, corresponds to each level on that little gradient there. Um, but that's kind of cool especially uh, because Chitu Box will approximate how much resin you need for the print. Now, obviously you need to give yourself a little bit of buffer, but instead of just kind of eyeballing and dumping in half a resin vat, if you don't need that much, uh, makes cleanup and filtering the resin back into the container a lot easier when you're minimizing the amount of that you have to do. And of course, because these are brand new printers, we still have the protective film on the screen. So make sure you take that off before you print and uh, the screen uh, protective film. It's killing me to see that film on there because that's like my favorite part is ripping the protective film off of electronics. Both of these covers, yellow or red, are meant to block UV light from getting into your printer. Um, I wouldn't necessarily have this sitting for a long time in front of a sunny window if you're having resin sit in the vat for a while. Um, probably still best to have it shielded somewhat, um, but that's just me being extra cautious, I suppose. So hopefully that was useful in understanding kind of the, the differences and similarities between these two printers. Um, obviously the non-monochrome, slightly smaller um, R is going to be cheaper than the H model. Um, if you're going to do a considerable amount of printing, then uh, I would definitely opt for the monochrome screen. Myself, I'm impatient, <laughs> so I would definitely opt for this. And if you've ever had to replace a screen, um, I haven't had to do it on a model like these, I had to do it on a any cubic photon or photon s um, it can be a bit of a pain in the butt for sure um, so the less i have to maintain a machine means the more i'm printing and i'm printing faster so if you can swing it i would definitely suggest going for the monochrome screen hopefully you found all that useful remember like and subscribe and ring the bell to get notified when we upload more videos thanks for watching